Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Really appreciate it. We've been talking about the Riviera shirt for the last couple of months, for July and August. So I thought I'd review the two garments before I show you what's going to start happening in September for us. Um, every, this year, for So Confident, we've been using the same pattern for two months in a row. So July was uh, the first one, which is this. And we took the Riviera shirt and shortened the left front, added a section to the bottom of the sleeve, changed the collar from a collar and stand to a bias collar, and we emulated the front with a crossover back detail. I pulled out a kind of one of my favorite oldies but goodies Riviera shirt right here that's made pretty much like the pattern. A uh, couple of buttons, one right here, one at the neck. This has the collar and stand, tapered sleeve, simple back. But what I ended up doing later after wearing it is I stitched this down right here. I stitched the left front, which is longer, over the right front, and I stitched it in place. I put it on. I let the garment just fall where I wanted it to fall, pinned it, and stitched it. And I really, really liked that. I didn't have to worry about it blowing open. I didn't have to worry about wearing something underneath, a camisole or something like that. So that is what inspired, actually, the design for the August Riviera project. So this is the August project. And you can see that we've stitched it down. So took that from the previous garment added some buttons, and shortened the sleeve, and made a cuff. And of course, this fabric, this very graphic fabric, is really interesting. Someone, one of our good customers, posted on Facebook, I think just yesterday, perhaps, uh, this made up in a black and white in this fabric, which is one of our kits, with black pants. And it was so sharp. It was clean. It was sophisticated. And I loved it. So check out that Facebook. Uh, page if you're a member of So Confident and you'll see, I think it was on the private So Confident page. Um, I'm actually not sure about that. Maybe Betsy can confirm that. But it was so good looking that I want you to see it made up in the black and white. So August is coming to an end and we, we're still, of course, promoting all of our classes for So Confident, including the July and August. We're promoting these kits in the three colors, but we are sort of ready to get ready for September. And September is going to be here Friday. So we're shifting to a different pattern. Instead of the Riviera, we are using the Florence shirt pattern. The Florence shirt pattern has traditional collar and stand, banded front with buttons, has kind of a ruched pleated pocket, long sleeves with cuff and vent. But its sort of defining feature is it's very long and it has a tuck across the front that kind of hitches the whole garment up and just changes how it hangs. Years ago, I remember trying to write an article for Threads Magazine, and I needed a classic shirt pattern. And I couldn't find one. I, I mean, I think the only one I found was maybe Quick Sew, and it was sort of so-so. I'm sure there's probably some classic shirt patterns out there by this time. But I'm always looking for just that perfect shirt. And I was reminded of this when my fellow uh, folks at Kansas State University, uh, Dr. Har, who teaches construction, was looking for a classic shirt pattern for her students to make in the class. And she couldn't find one either. So they've been using the Florence shirt pattern for a few years now and using it as a classic shirt pattern. So I decided that the project for September would be taking the Florence shirt reshaping the body of it just a little bit, removing those tucks, changing the hemline to a shirt tail hem, basically deleting a few other things like the pocket and the band, <coughs> excuse me, down the back. So this is what the project is for September. Here we have, excuse me, <coughs> I'm going to have a little sip of something. I can't figure out what's going on with my voice. It, I just lose it every once in a while, so bear with me. I'm so sorry. Um, <clears throat> so here it is. Uh, I'm using a <clears throat> rayon chalet. <coughs> and 
And this is some cotton trim. Now this particular fabric is one of the kits. It's a very limited edition kit. And the motif on the fabric, each circle is a little bit of an Asian inspired design. Lotus flower, bamboo, a certain bird, that sort of thing. Really gorgeous fabric, very drapey. And the <clears throat> contrasting fabric is the band down the front, the under collar and the stand, the under cuff, and I've added a little band across the back. But by simply changing the shape of the body and curving the hem a bit, leaving a vent opening, it emulates a little bit of a shirt tail hem. This is my version of the classic shirt. It just happens to be the Florence pattern. So this is one kit, kit number one. This is kit number two. Totally different in feel. I see I didn't button it up. Need to do that. So this fabric is really fun. It has a lot of vegetation and some water and some swimmers. And then we've used this beautiful silk that's kind of a painterly type plaid, I would call it, for the trim, the bands, the under collar and stand, the under cuff, and the trim on the back. So hopefully you will enjoy this. If you're a yearly member of So Confident, you can also sign up just for the monthly class. Uh, we're going to be using the Florence shirt for September and October. We're really excited about October as well. So uh, get your kit, grab one of these kits. I think we're going to probably run out of these kits pretty quickly because we don't have tons of fabric of each one. So grab your kit and get ready because you're going to get everything on Friday. Usually you get the prep letter and some uh, introductory materials first and then the video comes maybe a week later. But because the first is Friday and all of that, everything's coming on the same day so you'll get everything on Friday. So that's what's coming in So Confident. I want to remind you about our class coming up in Cleveland, Ohio. The dates are November 7th through 11th. We start with a, an evening at Alex's beautiful, lovely, colorful home for a little meet and greet and see some clothes and chit chat and all of that. Share some, some what you have on, and, you know, wear something that you've made, It'd be great. And then the next three days you're going to sit and sew and you're going to work on knits. Now we're going to feature the ET pattern and the Helix pants. But we know that there will be some people who will finish those fairly quickly. And so we're going to open that up so that you can continue to work on knits uh, after that and make any knit garment that you want. We have a lot of t-shirts uh, in, in addition to the ET. So next week uh, on Tuesday, I'm going to show you some of the array of things that can be made in knit fabric. So stay tuned for that. But I hope you'll sign up. It's in a lovely uh, venue in Cleveland and we've given you information about hotels nearby, but if you live close by, you can drive and perhaps uh, stay with a friend, but otherwise there's some nice hotels, great restaurants in Cleveland. Cleveland's a fabulous town, so hopefully you'll join us in November for our knit workshop. We have another event coming up in October in Topeka. Natalie Channon of Alabama Channon is coming to town. She and her I think it's a CEO, actually, uh, her right hand. It, they're coming to Topeka for a trunk show on Thursday night. I think it's Thursday night, October 12th. And we're having that at our local Cyrus Hotel, which is a really cool hotel um, in a big room. She's doing um, uh, some book signing. She has a brand new book, and she'll bring her books and we'll sign them for you. But she's going to talk about her company, show you a lot of clothes, we're going to have a conversation together. You know, she's world renowned for her efforts for sustainability and uh, clothes that are made right here in the USA. And she's a very, very interesting person. So I hope you'll join us for the trunk show that night. We're going to have some food and some conversation, and we're really looking forward to that. So sign up online for that as well. One of the sites that I follow is 
called First Dibs, D-I-B-S. You may be familiar with it. Uh, we actually have this quite interesting warehouse here in Topeka. It's called 414 Warehouse. You should look it up. And my friend Chris owns it, and it's full of incredible, uh, I wouldn't call them antiques in that sense, but they are very, uh, she specializes in vintage furniture and great finds that she gets all over the country. And she puts these items on this First Dibs site and sells them all over the world. It's a fascinating place and she's really an interesting person. So um, I follow First Dibs because of her. Well, one of the perks of following that site through email is you get a magazine called Introspective Magazine. And actually, it's one of the more interesting online magazines that you could ever read. So even if you're not interested in buying anything vintage on first dibs, you know, watches or clothes or furniture or artwork or whatever, it's a great site to just watch, uh, to follow because the articles are uh, historical in nature in that they are inspirational and uh, they put them out there, of course, to try to sell the products that are on the site. Uh, that sort of relate to whatever era or culture or uh, whatever for that particular article. Well, something popped up yesterday that caught my eye. Barbara Streisand commissioned a dress to be made for her when she was getting an award in Israel for her humanitarian efforts. And she commissioned the dress uh, to be made by a costumer by the name of Ray and I am gonna get this wrong probably. His name is Ray Eghayen. Now I'd never heard that name until yesterday, but in reading about him, I discovered that he really was a very, very famous Hollywood costumer, making garments for Judy Garland, Diana Ross, Julie Andrews, people like that. Uh, a partner with uh, Bob Mackie, who I had heard of, and perhaps you have as well. For some reason, Bob Mackie's name is a little more, I don't know, in the mainstream of uh, Hollywood customers than Ray's, but nevertheless, they were partners in life and partners in business as well. In fact, Mackie worked for Ray. So this Ray Eghayen was inspired by a very famous painting, which you're all going to recognize, the uh, woman in gold. And so the woman is in this glittery gold gown. And the dress that Barbara Streisand had him design was based on that painting. Well, the dress is now for sale on First Dibs. The original price was $47,850, but you can have it today at 25% off for only $35,812.50. But more interesting, really, not only is the whole story great, um, there's actually a documentary and an interview with uh, this Ray designer. Uh, notice I'm not uh, pronouncing his name all the time. I'm calling him Ray like I know him real well. Uh, <clears throat> but at any rate, uh, what struck me was that it doesn't matter how good you are, how famous you are, who your clients are, whatever. Everyone gets inspired by something. And artwork is a very prominent inspiration source for a lot of fashion designers. So I googled uh, something like uh, art inspiration for fashion designers. And boy, was that a whole thing to the rabbit hole to go down. It was really, really fun. Probably the most famous dress that you and I would recognize is the Mondrian dress by Yves Saint Laurent. And it's that one that's blocked, printed, you know, with black squares, and then you have red and blue and yellow and all of that. Just, but you can just see the artwork and see the garments. And that's what Barbara Streisand and this Ray Eghayen were after, was taking that uh, Gustav Klimt painting and designing a dress to look like it. So hopefully you'll enjoy maybe um, signing up to get that introspective magazine and see and follow some of the vintage fashions. What I didn't know was that <clears throat> on the First Dibs site, they've sort of married with a site called The Real List. And The Real List is a site that sells extremely important vintage designer clothes. So it's fun to even just go through that site and see a simple t-shirt by Coma de Garcon that's gonna sell for you know $8,000 or whatever. It's just fun to realize that there are 
things out there like that and that people are wanting them and they're buying them and collecting them and it's, it's just really fun to follow. So check that out. But today we're going to talk about the willow blouse specifically and I have it on. The willow blouse was introduced in So Confident Series 11 a year ago or so. And I have it on in um, cross-dyed linen and cross-dyed means that uh, you have two different colors of fibers. You have a lengthwise fiber and a crosswise fiber, and they're two different colors. And so one might be a stronger color, one might be a, a lighter color, even white or black or something like that. But by the time they're blended, then it turns into a third color. And it's always very interesting, and I love them. And I love this weight of linen. It's very soft by the time you wash it. It kind of totally breaks down. It's linen, it wrinkles, you can press it if you want to. I don't seem to want to do that, so I just kind of wear it a little bit rumpled. But I, for summer and the end of summer and even early fall, I am still into linen because it's such a great natural fabric to work with. And there are people who really only want to work with natural fabrics, and I get that. Uh, I think that that's something that Natalie Channon will talk about when she's here in October, is the uh, desire to work with natural fibers instead of uh, manufactured fibers. So I'm going to talk about uh, this particular garment, specifically about the collar. Um, I had an email from a, a friend and student who was here at our last So Kansas, and she left and went home and was making some things that had collars, and she sent me pictures of collars, and they were all a little bit uh, maybe wavy, they weren't just lying perfectly around the neck, they weren't smooth and so forth, and she was wanting to know what to do. So it got me to thinking, well, what do you do to make a collar look better? So we're gonna talk about that. So let me get my little board. We're back to the board, even though we've gotten so high tech, we don't need the board so much anymore. But first of all, I wanna talk about interfacing. Over the years, I have experimented with every interfacing there is that you can get. And some years ago, like many years ago, we discovered this fusible Trico. Trico is a knit, so it has a bit of stretch to it. But this is a Trico fusible interfacing, very, very sheer and lightweight. And you can feel the side that has the glue on it. It's just a little bit rougher. We carry this now in white and nude and black. But once I found this, I, I rarely looked again. Every once in a while, I'll be lured into ordering some different interfacing because of the price, mostly. This comes from Japan. It's not the least expensive interfacing you'll ever find. But I always go back to this. And it doesn't matter the weight of the fabric. I, it can be a very sheer, thin fabric to quite a heavy fabric. This interfacing works for all of my needs all the time. But what I have discovered when I use this is that when I'm laying out my pattern pieces, I try to identify a section of fabric that I'm going to be cutting the small pieces that are going to get the interfacing, like the collar, the cuff, a band, a stand, whatever it is, they're usually smaller pieces. And so I like to fuse a larger section of interfacing to the fabric first, and then I cut out the, gar uh, the uh, garment piece, the pattern piece, with a pre-interfaced piece of fabric. Now I might identify a section and fuse that down. I might cut away a section after I've cut all the big pieces out and that's left. It doesn't really matter. You're just finding the area where you're going to be cutting those pieces. But what I do, I don't pre-shrink this, although in my craftsy class called uh, Underneath It All, I talk about how to shrink interfacing, but frankly, I've never done that in my whole life. I shrink it right before I put it down by p placing the fusible side, obviously, to the wrong side of the, of the fabric. I hold my iron over and I steam it, and watch the steam, just shrink that up just a bit. You can watch it just move ever so slightly. So I'm shrinking it before I'm actually putting the iron on it to press it down permanently. Works every time. 
This has never, in all the years I've used it, it's never bubbled, it's never released, it's never done anything except do its job. If I feel like I need some extra support, I can use two layers, but that's even pretty rare, actually. So for collars, I always interface the under collar. And I sometimes interface the upper collar. It depends on the fabric I'm using, the style of the collar, whatever, but that's a choice. I always fuse a little sample first to see what it's gonna do to the fabric, because you can't tell by feeling this and feeling this of what's gonna happen. You have to fuse it down on a sample, close your eyes and feel it and understand how much body it's gonna to add to it. What I have found with this is, because it's a Trico, it never really gets too stiff. It's always pliable, it molds, it just seems to work. So, cut your piece out on a pre-interfaced piece of fabric. Now, once you've done that, you're going to sew your under collar and your upper collar together, obviously, around the edges. You're gonna trim that down, but you're not gonna trim across the corners, like I learned to do in seventh grade. Those days are gone. I leave the fabric in the corner. Now, I'm doing this on paper, and it would be in fabric, and this would be trimmed a little bit, but notice that I've, I've marked this as an under collar, so that I will take my fabric, I have my two layers of fabric together, and I'm gonna fold the seam allowance to the under collar side, and I always start with the ends rather than the top, and then I fold the adjacent seam allowance down over it. And I just press that one inch section, give that a press. And then for trimming, I have this portion hanging out from the side and I'll just trim that off in line with that folded edge. That is the amount of trimming that I do. Works every time. So then I have my bamboo point turner. <clears throat> I prefer the, so <clears throat> excuse me, the softness of this. <clears throat> and then this is not a poker. This is not something where I'm gonna poke that corner. I'm gonna use these edges and I'm going to put that in there and I'm going to push that against these outer edges and that will give you a good point every time. Then, I'm ready to move this, is that all right? Mm -hmm. All right, move that out just a little, little ways. Then I take my collar that's been turned, and I wrap this around a ham. And I've turned down the seam allowance. Sometimes, this is back to old tailoring days, sometimes there's a roll line indicated, so you need to determine where the collar is going to actually roll. In this case, I just turned the seam allowance down. I pin it like this, like a neckline, and then I steam it. I don't put the iron to the fabric. I steam it, give it a little hand pat, and then I leave this, preferably overnight. Now, if you have a ham stand, great. They're hard to find these days. So I use this opening in a tailoring board, and I sit that right there and leave that overnight so that it has a memory of where it's gonna fold. So let's see if what was supposed to happen happened here. So you can see that these edges no longer line up. So this has been shifted so there's a favoring to the upper collar. And I want to base that 
to retain that offset. That's what it is going to help your collar roll. And the fact that I steam that in the round is going to help that shape around your neck. So that is shaping a collar the, the good old tailoring way. Doesn't matter what the fabric is, it doesn't have to be wool, it could be anything. So, do we have any questions about that or shall we move on? Let me have a different way to check the comments, so I hope I'm going to keep up here. Um, Do you always use the ham, or only do, you, um, or is that for only for certain fabrics? Say that again. Do you always use the ham, or yeah. is it um, for only for certain fabrics? Oh, I always use a ham. Yeah. Do you follow a grain when applying the interfacing? Oh, kind of, sort of. Uh, with a trico, there's not a real true grain, but there is a difference in the stretch of this, so it kind of depends on. Uh, which direction I want the stretch. I can use this on wovens or knits, uh, but generally I am, I'm not measuring lists like we do, you know, from the straighted grain to the edge and all of that, but I'm generally in a certain direction one way or the other. I can be off a little bit and it won't make any difference. Um, this is a question about the Riviera kits. Is that okay? Sure. Okay. Um, are the block printed Riviera kits already sold out? No, we have, uh, we have some of all three colors. Blo the block Oh, print. the block printed. Yes, we are all sold out of that and we're not getting more. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. And I do think I saw one previously, so hold on. Um, there's some, they had some questions about the, your um, first dibs and that conversation. Okay, we can, um, we can pick that up later maybe. Okay, okay. Is that all right? Yep, that's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. We'll go back. Okay, all right. So let's talk about some fabrics. We are in sale mode here last week, this week, and next week. Last week was prints, this week is solids, and next week is knits. So we are we're going for it. All of the fabrics that are on sale for the next week are 60% off. That's 6-0. And a lot of them are linen. A lot of them are the cross-eyed linens like I have on. Uh, there are about 40 fabrics on the sale. Obviously this is a smattering of them. I did pull out some uh, cross-eyed linens, some solid linens that are not cross-eyed, and some novelty things as well. I want to show you uh, Erin's pants. She made the West End pants in linen. These are so fantastic. You know, it's a great weight, uh, nice flow. Uh, I don't know, they look, to me, you could wear this almost year round, mm -hmm. really. It's fantastic. But it's the kind of uh, linen that is great for pants, for the willow top, blouse, Whatever. Anyway, um, so we start up here. This is actually linen that's crinkled, and it's permanently crinkled. So this would make a fun uh, willow blouse or any other sort of top as well. Probably not for pants so much. It's a little bit sheer, but it's a great little texture, and it's pure white. This is a cross-dyed linen called grape soda, and it's purple, and it's white. So when they're mixed together, it looks lavender. This is called something orange, um, orange, uh, Xenia orange, and boy, what a color. This is, uh, this has been my color this summer. I've just loved it. This is the color, this is solid, not cross-eyed. This is a solid linen, the same as Aaron's pants. And then this yellow is cross-eyed. What a beautiful fabric this is. It's so, so, so soft. Um, we buy good linens, you know, we buy the kind of linens that really, they wrinkle right, if you know what I mean. Um, they're not inexpensive linens. We buy really good linens. But this is uh, yellow and white. And then we have one that's cross-dyed with blue and yellow, more like an aqua and yellow. And that is called sky blue and lemon yellow. So these are all linens. And we have a lot more linens on the sale as well. 
Then we get in some other novelty uh, fabrics. This is actually a polyester, but it has a beautiful texture to it. And I think it would make a lovely uh, willow blouse or a willow dress. So in the willow pattern, you have either the short sleeve, like I have on, or the long sleeve. Both are in the pattern. And it's easy to lengthen this into a dress. This happens to be silk, but silk and this polyester have very much the same character of drape. So think about making a dress uh, that can go into fall for a holiday. It's a beautiful, beautiful blueberry color. Now this is uh, a fabric that I would use as a light rainwear. I would make something like a Charlie Bomber, and I would use it as a, rain, a piece of rainwear. This is similar to the, oh, by the way, we have this in black and white and this color, all on sale. This is a fabric that uh, is polyester as well, and it's like a, a deep crepe. There's quite a bit of texture to it. It's a gorgeous deep red, very, very, very drapey. Again, a beautiful blouse, tank. We've made uh, an Anne's tank out of it. Um, I don't know what else we've used it for. Maybe that was it. Anyway, great blouse. Then I have some uh, silk dupionis that are on sale. We have this gorgeous fuchsia. We have a, a, an orange, a, a black. So there's a few silk dupionis on sale as well. Now this, you're never going to be able to tell what this is, but this is a black fabric, obviously, that is crinkled permanently. And this is just sort of what's happening in fashion. You know, make yourself a great pair of Picasso pants out of this, and I think you would wear these year round. My favorite Picasso pants have very little drape to them, and that's one of the styles of pants that you can get away with not having a lot of flow, Picasso pants in that crinkled black. And then this is a stretch woven. Now this is stretchy on the lengthwise grain. So if you're gonna make pants out of this, maybe Madrid pants or getaway jeans, something like that, you're gonna want to cut this on the cross grain so that the stretch is going around you. But check out all of the 40 fabrics that we have on sale uh, this week at 60% off. Okay, so now we can talk about anything. All right, let's go back to those comments. Let's see what else we have. Do you have any heavy linen? What is the weight of each linen on display? Well, um, this is a handkerchief weight. This is uh, probably about a seven ounce. This is about a seven ounce. This is lightweight handkerchief, and this is a uh, lightweight handkerchief. We do have uh, several on the sale in what I will call more basic colors. There's a couple of grays, a little uh, more taupey color, and they are more of a mid-weight seven ounce linen that is great for pants and, and bottom weight fabrics or jacket weight. There's all kinds of weights on sale uh, from t uh, handkerchief weight to, we don't have any super, super, super heavy, but you know, nice quality weighty drapes for uh, pants and bottom weight. What is the purple rainwear? This is, I believe it's acetate as I recall. Um, well, it's not. It's nylon and polyester and spandex. We, uh, I've made a, a rainwear jacket out of this using the Yvonne Priscilla pattern that we've, we had years ago. It's a fun, fun piece to work with, really easy to work with. It is not waterproof. It is water resistant. Um, is the handkerchief linen see-through? Um, I don't know. Can you see through this? No, I mean, I think you can definitely see like when there's multiple layers of fabric, you know, so it's, but it's, it, it's a great. I wouldn't call it sheer. Right. I wouldn't call it yeah, sheer. Yeah. These are not sheer. You're not seeing anything underneath. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Perfect weight. Mm -hmm. um, have any, um, somebody had a question about the bust for the willow. Um, if you're busty, is there any issues with the pattern? Well, you can always add a bust art to this pattern. It's easy to do. Uh, you just want to make sure this has enough ease in it that this particular drape doesn't you know, protrude too much. Uh, so you want to measure the pattern with the drape in place. So you're measuring across the pattern with the drape in place. Make sure there's enough ease, four to six inches, and add a bust art if you need to. 
Um, this is back to your collar discussion. Yeah. Um, so what about basting after pressing on the ham? I don't know if it's the basting to uh, keep yes. the layers together. Right. I would do that. I would machine baste these layers together after I've removed it from the ham to keep that offset in place. Um, could you repeat, is it usually the collar that's interfaced? The under collar is interfaced always, and the upper collar sometimes, depending on the fabric. If in doubt, interface both. You can always pull up one of them off if you don't like the look. Uh, I think it's better to interface than to worry about not interfacing. <laughs> But if you're making something, here, here's part of my decision making, I guess. Um, this particular interfacing that we use does not add stiffness. It adds support. But it also makes fabric a little bit smoother. So if you're making something uh, that's very rumpled and crinkled and all of that, maybe you don't want to do that to the upper collar because you want to retain the same look. That might be part of your decision. Uh, I think this question refers to the fabric on the board here where you were demonstrating the collar. Okay. They wanted to know what it was. We have this fabric. <laughs> this is a shirting fabric uh, that we have. It's a tiny little shirting check. Uh, maybe Betsy can find this. Uh, we have several shirtings. This was one that was used in a kit for the... Um, Whistles Yoke project back in, I think, March or, or March or April, March, I think. So we still have a little bit of that fabric. It's a great, great, it's a really nice shirting. And they could also have been referencing the background fabric. I'm not oh, sure. this? This, um, is, this is denim. <laughs> so. Sorry. Just a, just a, <laughs> was a scrap of denim that I used <laughs> to wrap the board. We probably don't have this anymore. What patterns would you recommend for the silk dupioni? Oh, okay. Well, what initially comes to mind is the Now Shirt project that we did in February, where we took the Now Shirt and we extended it to an A shape, did some tucking on it, um, and you don't have to do all of that, but the Now Shirt looks really great in Dupioni. Um, sometimes I'll buy a yard or so of any dupioni, any color, so I can cut strips on the bias and use the strips for pipings, which we also did on that project. But I like to add bits of dupioni to my garments. Um, if you're making a fractured jacket, which is another whole conversation that's going to come up here pretty quickly, dupioni is a nice uh, applique type uh, fabric. But other patterns would be, um, let's see. Um, I wore a Venice shirt today uh, to work, because this was already here, and that's the one with the ruffle around the bottom, and that would look really good in Dupioni because that ruffle would be gorgeous. Um, you could make a dressy Tosca dress and wear it for holiday. Um, well, actually, you could make a Riviera out of Dupioni. That would be a nice, nice piece trying to kind of run through the alphabet here. Um, it would, because wasn't the other Riviera that you showed, was that a, it wasn't a Dupioni, but it was it a silk? That's right. This, this Riviera is not a Dupioni, but it's Dupioni-like. And it's a Burmese silk, but it has the same characteristics as Dupioni. So I know that the Dupioni would look good in the Riviera. I think that you have to be careful with Dupioni for making, let's say, a jacket because it's so, there's no, not much hang to it. If I were going to use a Dupioni in a jacket, I'd probably underline it and line it, and that would turn it into a jacket weight piece. But just a single weight, a single layer of Dupioni for a jacket probably wouldn't cut it. So I think of it as more as blouses. It could be a, a cottage shirt. It could, um, Make a, oh, you could make a Liberty shirt out of it. It'd be gorgeous. In fact, people have done that. Does the Florence hang off the shoulder or is it on the shoulder? The Florence is pretty much on the shoulder. This looks like it hangs off this form maybe, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so, but 
it's meant to be, a, it is a set in sleeve and it is meant to be uh, at the shoulder. This is a traditional fit through the bust, shoulder, all of that. And then of course you can add the amount of ease that you need in the hips. But this is what a classic shirt is all about. It's not off the shoulder, it's pretty set. Someone said the Tosca would be nice in a Dupioni. Do you, do you think it would? Uh, what now? The, the Tosca. Do you think the Tosca oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. would work I, I in said, the Dupioni? Yeah, I, I Did you I say said that? that. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Someone else was yeah. thinking the I same think a thing. I think a Tosca would be fantastic. Sorry about that. I can't talk and I can't hear. <laughs> <laughs> trying to turn <laughs> towards you. Um, could the cotton dark indigo be used for a pair of Valencia pants? Um, I'm trying to... Cotton dark indigo be used f for the Is that Valencia? one of the fabrics on this? Oh, co might. cotton dark indigo for... Yeah, I would. I know which one you're talking about. That would be great. Another one on sale? Yeah. Is that... Okay. Yeah. Okay. That would make great pants. In fact, I have a pair in those, I think. Or I have one that in maybe the gray of the same thing. Hudson pants is what I made. Is the Florence pattern on sale? It is for So Confident members who use their discount, but uh, regularly not on sale. This week, only the Willow Blouse pattern is on sale. Well, but if you else? sign up for the, yeah, if you're a member of So Confident, you have a discount code and you can use it to buy your patterns for the class. Well, I don't see any other questions, so what else is on sale? Okay, so the Willow Blouse pattern. The, we have some tutorials on sale. We have a whole tutorial on how to make the Willow Blouse, start to finish. It was part of uh, Series 11, So Confident, so if you were a member of that year, you have it. But you can now purchase just that class. That's on sale. Um, collars and stands is on sale. That talks about the whole interfacing thing I talked about, the shaping of the collars, the corners, all of that. And sewing with linen, how to sew linen. And then the fabrics at 60% off. So there you go. Okay. I don't okay. See any other questions? Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining me, and I will see you next week. <laughs>